YouTube, what's up with it? It's Envy Closet Med Grower. And of course, your homie, Mr. Big Dookie. And we're back yet again for another weekly update. See, things getting a little out of control over here in Veg. Things are beautifully ripened and ready for harvest over here in the LED. And in our HID tent with the dual-ended ceramic metal halide from Grower's Choice. See, we're killing it. All sorts of things blowing up, flopping like crazy. We'll get into that in a second. Merchandise forums, nbcmg.com. And uh, yeah, what else do we got to announce, Big Duke? We went to the Bay Area this weekend, and uh, it was a fun trip. I went up there because my wife's having a baby. We want to have a baby shower with her family. So me and my wife are uh, expecting here in early October to have a boy. She's quite a long ways along. And I'm excited to start announcing it to you guys and uh, having myself a healthy, handsome son here soon, who so far is growing along very well. So. I'm very happy, very excited, my whole family is, and everything went well with our trip. One of the most exciting parts of the trip was I got to go hang out with Dago from uh, SC Bakeware and Keep It Green channel here on YouTube. So Dago's a great guy and he lives up in the Northern California area, not too far from where I was. And we got to link up for a minute, have a nice sesh and hang out in his garden. So took a couple pictures for Instagram. But definitely go check out Dago's channel. Uh, keep it green here on YouTube. I'll re if I remember, I'll leave a link down in the description. And yeah, let's get into it, into the flower tent. Okay, into the flower tent. See, Toxic Lord on the right here and the Strog coming along great. Jamaican Sativa on the left. Crazy Foxtails flopping over like nuts. But at least it's starting to get somewhere and I can probably start flushing it soon. Obviously it's been a little deficient. You can see the leaves are a little beat up on it. But I think that's uh, partly because while I was gone, gone, the dripper system for this one got ended up getting clogged. So I think uh, it only worked for about a day and a half, two days of the three to four days I was gone. When I came back, the, uh, the root zone was dry on it and a lot of leaves had died off at a pretty quick rate. On top of that, it was getting a pretty light nutrient dose because I had been matching the tank more for this one's life cycle instead of this. And it should, be, should have been getting a lot stronger dose of uh, phosphorus and calcium. And uh, it really, really took a toll on it. You can see some of these are just, especially up here in the light, just crunchy and beat up. But the buds that are here, you can see other than the foxtail and not so good a structure, they got some nice frost down in there. So I'm expecting at least, you know, decent potency. Probably not the strongest thing I've ever smoked, but what I'm excited about is the land race uh, style sativa and, you know, from smoking the weed down in Jamaica. And I've said almost every time I look at this plant, the raciness and euphoria and such strong sativa attributes just kill it for a daytime smoke, so. Even if it's not the greatest structure, even if it is a little ugly, I'm happy I grew it and I'm happy I'm getting close to the end. It's on day 63 right now. So yeah, it actually needs to get flushed out today. I haven't flushed it yet, but it needs to get flushed out today. And then hopefully I can pull it down right around the 11 week mark. It's nine weeks in now, two weeks worth of flush. Pull this sucker down, clear it out. So pretty happy about it though. So far, it's been a nice, fun project, and uh, it was really fun to watch it grow, especially with this sativa. When I put it into flower, it was only about yay tall, and the thing literally quadrupled in size. So, really fun grow, even though, like I said, structure-wise, like, there's not much you can do with that. I'm still going to smoke the crap out of it. But... Let's look over here at a plant that has some much better structure. This is North Genetics Toxic Lord. And this plant is killing the game. It's Chemdog Crossed Godbud. You can see as we go down in here, structure on it is great. Before I went on vacation, 
up to the Bay Area, I had um, gave it a minor lollipop down here. And I think it was about perfect. It's actually on day 14 of flower right now. And it was starting to flower out a little bit in veg already. So I think it might be, you know, a little bit further along hormonally than as it normally would be at day 14. But the good thing is I trimmed out a lot of the fluffier flower growth here on the bottom. And I think what's left, I might be able to get to ripen up pretty decently and end up with a pretty large harvest out of this. So I'm also thinking it's pretty much done with its stretch. When I left for vacation, it was only like maybe an inch or two shorter than this. So I think while I was gone, it pretty much finished up any stretch it was going to do. And from there on out, it's just going to butt up. But that's perfectly fine for me. The last few plants I've grown have grown way too high up here into the canopy, way too close to the bulb there. Blind y'all. But uh, so this one's definitely going to be at a much more healthier height for what I need to work with. And I think it's still going to get quite a yield out of it. So I'm excited about that. I think it's going to be a really fun grow. You can see the st node stacking on this is beautiful too. Some beautiful frost coming in too. Day 14 can't beat that but like I said hormonally I think it's a little bit ahead of where it's at so if I was to guess I'd say hormonally it's probably more like day 18 to 21 ish just because it was already starting to flip in in veg so so far so good though toxic lord Jamaican sativa that's really all we got for you in the flower tent for right now um, should be switching it up and getting some things in here something new in here pretty soon though so let's move it on from here though and head off into veg all right let's cruise it back on through the garden and before we get into veg let's talk about our sponsors we much appreciate north genetics topshelflight.com and skunk labs horticulture are for everything they do for the show you can use the message closet mg at all three for discounts north genetics at their instagram or send them a mail on gmail with the message closet mg 20 percent discount topshelflight.com any of your leds definitely kills the game over my led tent 10 percent off with the message or with the discount code closet mg at checkout now skunk labs horticulture works a little differently you get a free gift with any one of your purchase at skunk lab horticulture and it's definitely worth your while so if you want any skunk labs products Order their skunk labs and then email them at skunklabshc at gmail.com with the message closet mg and your order number and they will make sure to add in a free gift for you. So that's what we got going on there. Other than that, as you guys see, my cool stuff, nbcmg.com. All right, let's move it on into veg. Okay, my veg tent is getting a little ridiculous in here. So let's uh let's start talking about some things where do i want to start how about this gigantic monster of a plant this is my smurf berry it's in a number five pot while i was gone it just blew the hell up just looking amazing look at some of these fan leaves are incredible i am really really happy with the health and structure and size of this plant now and i'm excited so that way as soon as i get this tent harvested which is going to happen uh, probably tomorrow after I'm done with this video I'm gonna start working on those but that's what's gonna go in most of that tent you can see it's still fairly pliable I can get those branches bent down a little ways and you know stretch them down in there and get it under the under the net and I think it'll be all right after I put it in there, I'm going to leave it on veg mode for probably a good three to five days with only the Cree cobs, just so it can fill in the net, get happy with it, get acquainted to it. And the other reason I'm going to do that is because I want the next plant I'm going to talk about, the Ghost OG, to get a little more size and root structure in order to get there. So next one, like I said, I want to talk about is the Ghost OG. I just trimmed a bunch of tops off of this, as you can see, because I wanted to use them for clones. So, as you can see down there, I got a bunch of clones going, most of which are not going to be mine, going over to friends' gardens, you know, close friends of mine, so we can keep the genetic and keep things rolling. And uh, so far, so good, though. It's looking... I, this is another one I came back and just blew the hell up. It had probably grown five, six inches in four days while I was gone. And... Uh, 
like before I cut these tops, it was all the way up here, damn near as tall as the Smurf berry, but a lot more lankier. So you can see I had like one top right here I super cropped because the next node was a lot further down that wasn't really growing a side branch, so I didn't really want to clone from there. And I didn't have enough room up there, so I super cropped that one. Other than that, I ran, you know, topped a bunch of them. You can see the other nodes about to pop up. Hopefully some of the lower canopy down in there will pop up along with it and meet up. So, so far so good. I also transplanted it from a number one to a number two pot. So it should start filling out and doing pretty well for me. I'm excited about that. And like I said, I'm hoping in it in about five, six days, I can start putting that one over here along with the Smurf Berry. So that way it'll be Ghost OG Smurf Berry over in the other tent. And I'm gonna leave the Smurf Berry on veg mode in that tent until the ghost is ready. So that's the plan anyways. And then on top of that, if I don't have enough room, I'm also planning tomorrow for our next plant, the LA OG here, you see a very similar structure to the ghost. I'm starting to get a little more leaf structure too. It's one thing you can see on the ghost, I'm starting to get five leaf patterns again. That means my nutrient balance is getting a lot better. But uh, other than that, this LAOG is, I'm just waiting maybe one more day and then I'm gonna transplant it into a number two pot. And I'm hoping it can get a, just a little more size too. And if I don't fill up the whole space with just those two, then I'm gonna run the three of them in there all at the same time and uh, I'll have to cut another clone or two some clones off of that just to make sure we can keep it I know a friend of mine already has my other cut of it I had two clones when I first got it so I do have it around but I'm still probably going to cut one or two clones of that in about a week right before I flip it so that's the plan for those plants uh, one more of them we can talk about way back here is our dream berry we love our dream berry this one back here is a beautiful plant it's grown along very healthy as well see if we can get a little better look down here and as you can see killing it very healthy very happy it's been growing that way for a while i had topped it Let's see if i can get it. there you go and you can see the new shoots are coming in pretty good on the tops that i did top so it's going to turn into a nice bush that one's also due for a transplant this week probably in a few days though four or five days from now i'm going to transplant that one into a number five pot and then after it goes into a number five pot it's going to get a tomato cage on top of it and it's going to go in the hid tent so i'll give it you know another week after it gets in the number five pot and then it'll go in the hid tent and we'll see where it goes from there Sorry about that, getting a little shaky. So, that's all those ones. Now let's talk about the ugly. Right here in front, this damn kosher smurf I've been having issues with ever since I popped it. It, uh, I know it's a root zone issue. It has to be. The only thing I ever find in the root zone is, is springtails, which is not a good or bad thing. They're more or less a beneficial insect, but if they overrun your root zone, they can start to cause damage due to pH imbalances and that type of thing because it's too much, too much microbial activity amongst them without a balance. So, you know, I'm not running no-till here. These are synthetic gardens. So any sort of major insect inside your root zone, beneficial or not, can still change your balances a lot differently than if you're running an organic setup. So this one right here on the kosher smurf, that's more or less the problem I've been dealing with. I'll wipe them down, they'll build back up. And uh, this plant just seems to be susceptible to them. But it is still growing. I did notice more size since I got home. It was leaning pretty hard, so I flipped it around, rotated it. Now it's kind of leaning, turning back the other way. So that's good. It is bushing out and it's getting more size to it. Some of the newest growth is definitely nice and healthy and not really getting too bad in it but you know it's quickly catching up all the time the bigger the plant gets the more deficient leaves it gets as well as the more healthy ones it seems so i keep fighting it it keeps getting bigger but at a pretty slow pace we'll see where we get and i'll keep it going but uh, eventually i want to put that in the hid tent as well 
and I'm hoping probably about two weeks, a week and a half to two weeks from now, I can get that transplanted into a number five pod as well. So that's the plan for those. Now let's talk about the little ones. Down here in the back, this is our Toxic Lord. Toxic Lord is an amazing, amazing plant over there. But as I was telling you guys earlier, I had issues with this plant wanting to turn or flower in veg. So the clones I got of it were somewhat flowered and need to re-veg out. So this is what I got going on and it's definitely looking okay and it's starting to re-veg. You can see the top node on there is growing like one leaf and spitting them out and starting to get longer. It uh, had some really nice roots after getting cloned and I'm pretty sure if I pulled it up you would see some roots growing out the bottom. So. I know I did earlier when I looked at it uh, yesterday, right after I got back. So, pretty cool. Now, the last and most certainly not least down here are Moneyberry. I have two little baby Moneyberries, and Moneyberries is Ace of Spade Cross Plushberry. It's also by North Genetics. What I'm hoping I get out of that is a Pink Fino. Uh, what the Pink Finos are is a Black Cherry Soda Back Cross Fino, uh, being that this is a cross from two different strains from TGA. TGA used black cherry soda to make both of those strains. And they bred this down to F3 at North Genetics, I believe, using all Pink Lady Finos. Or the F2 and F3 were Pink Lady Finos, and I'm pretty sure these are the F4 seeds. I'm pretty sure that's how it goes. I'm not 100%. But either case if it goes right it should be a lot like my old smoking aces cut I, oops sorry my old smoking aces cut i used to have that grows like really pink bright pink calyxes in early flower like weeks two through five of flower they're really pink and then they fade into all sorts of different colors purples of purples and violets and it's really really pretty so that's what we're hoping for those two little ones is some pink lady money berries so we're going to see what happens with it and that there is the veg garden not a whole lot more to talk about uh you guys see what my plans are with everything you see leroy's chilling there with the cup he did an amazing job while i was away thank you leroy you're an awesome guy so let's move it on from here over into the led tent all right now as you can see we're onto the led tent run by our Duolux 600 by TopShelfLight.com and everything in here is ready to be harvested. I actually would have harvest, started harvesting over the weekend but I was out of town so turns out I'm running a full 56 days here. Uh, this one on the left is it's day 56 on Beyond Dream. On the right is Dreamberries. So like I said day 56 from flower it's definitely Fully ripened here, fully matured. Really nice frost structure. Really nice buds everywhere. Uh, the Beyond Dreams is starting to get some nice purpling. Let's see, I take off the red blue spectrums. Now we're just using the cobs to get a little more natural light. Everything is flushed out amazingly. And I think when I start harvesting, I'm going to start harvesting right in here and then once i finish the beyond dreams then i'll move on to the dream berries and do it that way so the only other thing i got to talk about in this tent is those damn leaf hoppers i did have some leaf hopper issues in this tent which is a not a good pest to have and uh, when i came back from my vacation four days later after trying to do everything i can to at least kind of minimize them at least till i can get through this flower sterilize the tent hopefully keep them from moving on which so far has been really good. I have not noticed any signs of them in any other tents, so that's good. And I've also been, uh, like I said, when I came back, I only noticed a little bit of damage on some of the leaves. And I also found one of them living in here when I came back and I caught that sucker with my hand and squished him. So got rid of the one little leaf hopper I found. I haven't seen any more, but I wouldn't doubt if there's one or two little lurking or at least some nymphs or eggs. So need to get this plant, these plants harvested before they really do get a bad contamination. But for right now, 
I'd say they're still pretty safe. I still would probably pass microbial and pest testing on most any of the buds in here. I just really need to make sure I give it a nice fine trim and any parts that have any damage such as that need to make sure they get trimmed away and taken off. So that's what we got going on right now though and uh, I'm excited to get this harvested and hopefully get some harvest videos to you guys this week. So that's what we got going from topshelflight.com LED tent. There we go. Nice shiny, shiny, shiny lights. I'm excited to get this cleared out, get the Smurf berries and the OGs inside, and that'll be pretty awesome because that plant is definitely ready and looking beautiful. All right, y'all. I don't know about you, but uh, I'm ready to smoke. So I'm gonna head on over, get the table ready, and we're gonna smoke on some weed that D Dago gave me. Much love to him. Be right back. All right, show y'all what I've been smoking on. This is uh, some of the gifts I got from Dago over at the Keep It Green Cannabis channel when I was visiting him. So some of it made it home, a lot of it got smoked. Over here on the left is Jawa Pai. His pheno number four he found, which is the lime pheno, which is amazingly good stuff. And I think I'm going to smoke some of that out of the bong. And then over here on the right, you can see these monster sized nugs are his bewitched frosted cupcake pheno. So amazing stuff. This one uh, tastes a lot like vanilla and uh, sugars and things like that. It's definitely an amazing kind of rare tasting strain whereas this one on the left is def it's like a really strong lime almost like a, a bitter lime kind of kind of like if you took a bite out of a lime but not not as juicy definitely more like a savory overtone to it but very good stuff anyways then on the top here i believe this was some keef trim bin keef he had made i believe it was with this bewitched and I don't have a lot of it left, but I pressed out some into rosin. So this is some of the rosin I pressed out of it. I need to press some more. I was getting about 40% yield with hand pressing it. So not bad. I only hand press if it's going to be, uh, you know, in concentrate form already, like bubble or dry sift or things like that. Other than that, I wouldn't make rosin, you know, if I was flower pressing. Uh, you need a lot more pressure, but that's a whole different side conversation. So for today, I think I'm going to pack up a little bit of this lime in the bong and I'm going to top it off with a little bit of that keef. And uh, I might pack a little bit of this in my pipe for afterwards, but that's what I got going. So get your bowls ready, get your weed ready, get your joints rolled, get your dabs ready. Do what you got to do. You know I'm taking a bong rip with y'all. And I'll be right back for that. Alright, you see I got the Jawa Pie covering, covered in Bewitched Keef. We're about to go in on it. And uh, yeah, much thanks to Dago. This one's for him. This one's also, all, as always, for the subs. It's right around 24,000 subscribers. So definitely appreciate every which one of you. And uh let's keep killing the game let's keep smoking on that dank so cheers to you guys cheers to dago delicious stuff so I think that's it for the show today see he also hooked me up with a pretty sweet Santa Cruz bakeware shirt we're gonna get on out of here it's Envy Closet Med Grower Mr. Big Dookie and we're out of here peace <laughs>